It's now my privilege to offer you graduates uh, a message. This is never an easy task. As Senator Bob Dole once quipped, being a commencement speaker is like being a corpse at a funeral. They need you to hold the event, but nobody expects you to speak very much. So I shall try to be brief and maybe exceed expectations as a corpse. First, as I look at you graduates I, uh, who are about to leave your academic home, I feel impressed to say to you what my mother would often say to me when I was a teenager and when I was walking out the door of my home. She would say, remember who you are. Now, being a bit of a smart aleck, as teenagers often are, I would sometimes pull out my wallet, pretending to search for my driver's license while saying, Mom, I forgot, who am I? Let me see. Oh yeah, I'm John Tanner, uh, male, blue eyes, brown hair, about 5'8", Caucasian, who lives at 1133 Buena Vista, South Pasadena. You got it, ready? Well, when I urge you to remember who you are today, I am not referring to the information in your wallets or even on your diplomas and resumes. These tell only part of the story about who you are and not the most important part. Far more important than the personal identifiers in your wallet is your eternal identity as a child of God. And more important than your professional resume is what I call your real resume. That is, what's written on your soul and in your heart. So today, when I repeat my mother's injunction, I'll do so with an addition, just to make sure you don't miss the point. I urge you today to remember who you are and whose you are. Your diploma will open doors of opportunity for you, but the door to heaven swings open on other hinges. The keeper of the gate there won't care about your worldly credentials, but he will, will care about whose you are. The Lord will want to know, are you his disciple? Have you taken upon yourself his name by covenant and by your conduct? Is his image in your countenance? Does his light and love radiate from your soul such that when you see him, you are like him? Have you been quickened by a portion of celestial glory so you are prepared to see, receive a fullness? In short, whose are you? This is my simple farewell message to you graduates today. Remember who you are as a child of God and remember whose you are as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So again, who are you? You are a child of God. We sing that wonderful hymn it was written actually by the music by someone who was in my ward, so I love, I am a child of God. This is your eternal identity. You are a son or daughter of a king, and not just of any king, but of the king of kings who wants to crown you with his glory and who is giving away his kingdom. You are of royal lineage. Be loyal to the royal within you. Sometimes you'll be tempted to doubt your eternal identity and live below your privileges, like Simba in The Lion King. At such times, may you, like Simba, hear the voice of the Spirit whisper to you, remember who you are, and realize that your Heavenly Father lives in you, for you are his child. So my dear graduates, you are a beloved child of God. Heaven is your native home. Remember who you are. Also remember whose you are. You are the Lord's not only by birthright, but by covenant. The Savior has purchased you with his own blood. He says to his people, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Thou art mine. He calls himself the bridegroom and his church the bride, inviting us to think of our covenant relationship with him in the language of love. I am my beloved, says the scripture, and my beloved is mine. 
so too we sing the king of love our shepherd is and i am his and he is mine forever in feudal times the question whose you are would not have sounded odd in the least people would answer i'm the vassal or the knight or the servant of my lord william of kent or john of salisbury or something like that and some servants even wore clothing whose colors matched whose they were these special clothes were called a livery and only those belonging to the great lord could wear the his colors in livery there were actually livery laws the academic regalia that we wear today functions in this same way my robe is blue and gold indicating that i graduated from the university of california elder clark's is crimson signaling that he graduated from harvard like our athletic or military uniforms or i was thinking on the way over here like airline companies uniforms these academic robes tell others whose we are but these robes don't tell whose we really are nor do yours we signal that clothing um, but we signal that by clothing ourselves in the spiritual livery of Christ, our master, which consists of his attributes and his priesthood. We read that the Lord's servants will meet the master at his coming, clothed in the robes of righteousness. When you graduate from this life, may you be clothed in the robes of righteousness. The Lord helps us remember whose we are by binding us to him through our covenants. The sacrament is a powerful weekly reminder of whose we truly are. So are our temple covenants. Remember whose you are by making and keeping your covenants, my dear graduates. Now, let me last invite you to remember whose, who and whose others are. Your neighbors are also children of God. And Jesus atoned for them just as he did for you. I hope that you have learned at BYU Hawaii to love and esteem your brothers and sisters, no matter their ethnicity, nationality, social status, language, or anything else about them. Here, we, are all, we all belong to one family, one ohana, sharing aloha. I love this quote from a sermon by C.S. Lewis. It is a serious thing, said C.S. Lewis, to live in the society of possible gods and goddesses, to remember that the dullest and most uninteresting person you can talk to may one day be a creature which, if you could saw it now, you would be strongly tempted to worship. There are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. It is immortals whom we joke with, work with, marry, snub, and exploit. Your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses." End of quote. So, take a minute now. Look to your right and to your left at your neighbors. If you could see them with God's eyes for who they really are and whose they really are, it might just knock your socks off. It might take your breath away. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, as you leave your academic home today, I urge you to remember who you are, remember whose you are, and remember whose, uh, who and whose your neighbors are. I testify that you are a child of God, of heavenly, a heavenly Father. He loves you so much, he gave his only begotten Son, so that through the, his atoning blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, you can become his by covenant. And he loves not just you, but all his children. And he expects us to love them too. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.